Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do once we've selected our clip is make sure to go to the settings page and scroll down to color management and set your settings to color science DaVinci YRGB. Timeline color space is DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate and output color space is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. The reason why I do this is because I want to make sure that I have the most control over the image before I break it down to its final output of Rec. 709. Once I've got my settings in place, I make sure to create a color space transform. These are the settings that I use for the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. If you don't shoot with this camera, then choose the settings that are appropriate to your camera. For me, I'm going to go with Blackmagic Gen 4.5. For the input gamma, black magic film generation 5, the output color space is going to be rec 709, and the output gamma is going to be gamma 2.4. Once I've got that in place, I'm going to make sure to label it, because if not, the nodes become a mess. <laughs> so always label your nodes. Next, we're going to create another node, and we're going to label this one offset. We're going to use this one to bring up the exposure. You could also use the curves for this, but I prefer the offset. Make sure that you're looking at your waveforms so the highlights don't clip. Then I'm going to slide it down all the way to the other end as I prefer to be the first node. The reason for this is we want to make all the adjustments before your color space transforms so you get the most out of the image. Next node is going to be a white balance node, and I'm going to go here to the color picker and make sure that I select a white spot. Make sure for this that you're looking at your vector scope, and if you go to settings in there and tick show skin tone indicator, you could see this line appears. Make sure that your skin tones are always aligned with this line. If not, you could grab the offset and adjust your skin tones through there. Let's turn it off and then back on to see what it looks like. Okay, I like it. Once the white balance is in place, I like to create another node, and this one is usually to draw the eye more into the frame or wherever you want the eye to go. In this case, since our subject is in the middle, I'm going to go ahead and create a mask so it acts more as a vignette and our eyes go more towards the middle. Make sure to expand it accordingly and soften out the edges to fade it in. Make sure that your mask is inverted. And then once again, I like to go to the offset and here bring down the exposure some very subtly so it feels natural and smooth. Once again, let's turn it on and off to see what it looks like with and without. Okay. Next, I'm going to right click on the node and add an outside node, and this is going to invert the mask so I can now control the inside of it and brighten that up a little bit. And I do the exact opposite for this, so the center of the image becomes just a little bit more brighter. And I'm going to bring that up a little bit until I get the look that I'm looking for. Okay, let's label this one mask outside for the outside mask. The next node I make is usually a color boost node. And this one, I like to add it to bring a little more pop to the image, but depending on the look that you're going for for this, I want it to feel a little more lively because of the red that's going on with her outfit and the green that's around the trees. I really like that, so I'm gonna go ahead and boost it to somewhere around here. That seems pretty vibrant to me, so I'm gonna go with that. Then we're going to move our nodes around and make some room right after our outer mask node. And this one we're going to label skin. And this is going to be, we're just going to select the skin here. You don't always have to do this. I don't always do this. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do it because I want to roll the highlights, but I don't want it to affect the highlights on her face. I do want to keep all that intact. So I'm going to select it here by pressing Shift H. I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to blur out the radius so it's a little more smooth and uh, that looks good. So now what I'm going to do next is create a power window and this is to leave out everything else that's not her skin so it only affects her face basically. This is probably overkill for this situation but I think it's important to know how to do this so when you do need to make changes that are outside of the skin tones you have the skin tones protected 
with this method. So that's why I'm applying this right now. To roll down the highlights, I don't know if it's necessary. It's a little bit of overkill, like I said, but if you wanted to make any other adjustments, this is probably a very good way to go about it. And this is how I usually go about it. Now we gotta make sure that we track the power window so it only follows her face. Sometimes you're able to just track this automatically with the auto track button. In this case, I'm doing it by hand because it didn't work when I did it automatically. So I'm doing it the old fashioned way. And luckily there's not so much movement going on in this clip. So it's a pretty quick and simple fix. I'm going to create a layer node so I can adjust the highlights without having to touch any of the skin tones for this particular case. Once you've created a layer node, make sure to swap out the order. For some reason, when you create the layer node, it's never in the order that I want it to be. So you have to make sure that you put the skin underneath and the one where you want to make the adjustments besides the skin on the top part. And for that one, I'm going to go ahead, make sure to label it again, because then you look back two months later and you're like, what is going on here? And roll down the highlights to a place I like. That seems pretty good. And again, for this, make sure you're looking at your waveform graph so you know exactly where this is landing. You want to make sure it doesn't clip. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. And again, the reason why I do this is because when the highlights clip, it begins to look like video. It begins to look like VHS. If you want it to look like VHS, clip the shit out of it. Go ahead. <laughs> but if you don't, I would spare it as much as you can. Of course, in some cases, you have no option but to clip certain highlights. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create another layer, an adjustment layer. Once I've got that in place, I'm going to jump once again over to the color page. And here I'm going to look for halation. This is something that I like to do to give the overall look of film. Again, this is just how I do this. This is, there's no right way to do it, but I usually like the image to look a little more beat up like film does. First thing, I adjust the threshold, bringing it up to a more subtle place, I think. We don't want it to be too distracting. Sometimes we do, in this case, I don't. I think it starts to look too much like VHS or something. See around her neck, you can start to see it starts to bleed there a little bit, and that to me looks very natural, very film. Then I'm gonna create another node, and this one is gonna be for grain. I'm going to go over again to the library, search for grain, pop it in there, and I'm going to select the 16 millimeter 500T grain, and I usually like to keep that anywhere above 0 0.5, depending on the image and depending on the overall look of the project. But in this case, I think seven looks pretty good. It's, you want it to, I like it to be prominent and visible. So I usually tend to go a little heavier with it because I also think it does nice things to the overall image. Of course, there could be a lot more to this, but I just wanted to simplify it as much as possible and put it out there. And I hope this was helpful and I'll see you soon.